This class um, has been in the making for about 10 years. So it's, uh, it happened through a series of experiences that I had through the fire service, um, culminating in a divorce. 16 years married, ended up in a divorce. Um, craziest day I ever had was that day when she asked me for a divorce. And that led to a two-year battle that I, I just, uh, it found me waking up out of my sleep, not being able to breathe. Um, I couldn't think properly. The guys at my firehouse carried me for six months. People talk about the brotherhood all the time. I had to move out of my home. I had 175 different offers from men in my department that told me I could stay at their home for a year rent free. What, what did I do to ever deserve that? You know, you ever ask yourself questions why you're graced and why you bless the way you blessed? Well, if you don't, you should. You know, because I have to agree with everybody that's been up here so far and had anything to say with regards to addressing you men and women. Um, this is an honorable profession. You guys aren't here because you got nothing better to do. You're probably here because you want to make yourself better. And you definitely want to take care of the people that are out there, including your families. So fortunately, like Micah, my department has an EAP program, Employee Assistance Program. So I'm waking up from my sleep. We go to this EAP, but you know, while the kids are there, uh, this guy wants to talk to me. So he asked me how things are going at home. I'm telling him, yeah, I can't seem to sleep till, I go to sleep easy. You know, but I wake up at like 1.30 in the morning and I'm awake till daybreak. I can sleep during the day, but I can't sleep at night. Um, I'm having all kinds of problems. I can't, uh, I can't seem to focus. I'm hypervigilant. And the most disturbing fact was I could not wear my mask without wanting to rip it off. And this is during just the fit testing. You guys have fit testing, right? You got to put the mask on. They put the little tubes in there. You got to move your head around. And, recite some words off a chart and stuff, very complicated stuff. So um, I'm, I'm standing in this little room with this little machine, dressed the way that we're dressed now, with a mask on, helmet, hood, and I'm doing a little fit testing, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I, I want to rip my gear off. And um, the only reason I don't do it is because our rival station, I work at station 33, our rival station 36 comes in. And I'm thinking, oh, good Lord. If you rip your mask off now, you may as well leave the country because you will never live this down. You know, there's not even a fire. And that's how bad it got. And then it got bad when I felt like doing that in fires. So during the divorce, all this starts to occur. And I'm speaking to the psychologist and I'm telling him, I, I don't get it. I'm doing split sessions at the gym. I'm lifting, I'm doing cardio. I have a 45 pound rock at a little location at my beach and I'll grab it and wade into water about chest deep and I'll run underwater holding this rock, drop it, come up, breathe, drop back down. When I'm trying to improve my cardio, it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know? And, and uh, I was probably in the best shape of my life, but it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. He asked me, uh, tell me about your calls at work. So I tell him, ah, you know, it's, it's, the nickname's the fire factory, but they put other stations in there now. Now we're kind of like the medical factory. You know, it's, I said, it's depressing. You know, I, I, you know, maybe it has something to do with the medical calls. And he just looks at me, not even smiling. Got his legs crossed, three-piece suit, perfect manicure, writing down in his little notebook. And I'm thinking to myself, this is really weird. And uh, he starts asking me more and more, tell me more about your calls. Till it finally gets to the point where I realize I know what you want to talk about. You want to hear about that nasty stuff. You want to hear about those things that we don't talk about. Where we go back to the firehouse and we say, oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I got a great support system. I got wife, kids. I got a meetings. I'm involved in my church. I got a great relationship with my parents. You know, I, 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 you know, I process all this stuff healthy. And uh, apparently, not so much. So he diagnoses me with PTSD. And uh, I, I didn't know what to make of that, because I, I have never been to war. 
You know, anybody in the military, raise your hands. Have served, currently serving. Thank you very much for your service, by the way. Because I always associated PTSD with people that have been at war, you know, and, and heroes. That's just like stuff when you've seen things, you know. Never once thinking that this career does the very same thing to you. Forbes Magazine, 2015, this year, came out with firefighting as a number one stressful job in the country, bar none. Now, I don't know what it was in 2014, but I'm willing to bet it was the same thing. It might not have been recognized. So their, their thinking is that you come on shift for 24 hours and you do this multiple times during the day. So the stress and anxiety level goes up and down constantly. Your sleep is interrupted, your meals interrupted, your thought processing is completely different, and the things that you're exposed to, they're just tragedy. And if you're fortunate enough to have a long enough career, you get to do this every third day, you know, and it's for a 20 to 30 year career. That's a lot of ups and downs. Maybe, maybe, that's why the divorce rate is so high in the fire service. Maybe that's why the use of alcohol and the abuse of alcohol and drugs is so high. Maybe that's why we have such behavioral issues. Maybe that's why spousal abuse is so great in the fire service. All of those things occur. We lead the country in all of that. That's not the stuff that we're proud of. So I'm sitting and I'm talking to this guy and he's talking to me about this stuff and he's digging more and more and more and more. He's asked me, well, what did it smell like? What did it sound like? Did it have a taste? What did it, what did you see? These are the questions he's asking me. I want to punch this guy, like right in the throat, you know? And um, I don't know what happened. I just started, I got angry. I started talking. I started telling him everything he wanted to hear. Uh, I asked him, uh, you ever smell burning flesh? I was pissed. I was pissed. I wanted to drag this guy right in with me. Welcome to my nightmare. Jump right in. You ever smell burning flesh? Do you have any idea what it feels like when it comes off? On your gloves? To have a family standing around screaming and yelling, my kids are in there, and we're trying to pull them out, and they're all dead, all three of them and they're the same ages as my kids? How do you not take that personal? How does that not change you, you know? Why are you asking me these questions? And this went on for eight months, a year, something like that, it's called exposure therapy. <laughs> Sucked, it really did. Um, but, it, but you know what? I can wear a mask, I can do anything that I used to do. And I'm glad, I'm eternally grateful for it because that was probably one of the most emasculating things I've ever been through in my life. I started questioning whether I was ever any good at this job to begin with, you know? And that's how this class came together. So I'm gonna get a little personal with you, I'm gonna share some stuff with you that you know you may or may not have heard before. And I might point some of you guys out and ask you specific questions. It's not to make fun of you. Um, it's just to draw you in, you know? Because this is a very important subject. <laughs> 